Bhutan. Here's Sally, our guide Karma, and our driver Kunli. Karma's on the right. They welcomed us to Bhutan. We hopped in the car and hit the road. Our first stop was Tempu, and we lucked out. Our visit coincided with the very first annual Bhutanese Folk Music Festival. We joined in with the curious crowd that had gathered to see the show. These cute school kids are wearing their traditional outfits, the gals in their kiras and the boys in their goes. In Bhutan, trucks rule the road, crossing the mountains with trade goods from India. We stopped at this market and with Karma's help bought a bunch of vegetables for lunch. Rat peppers, try one at your own peril. Dried yak cheese, hard as a rock. They eat orchids in Bhutan. We stopped at a restaurant and they cooked our produce up for us. Look at this delicious grub. These stones are engraved with prayers for the dead. They're placed at various auspicious holy sites by relatives hoping to gain spiritual merit for the departed. These little custom-made mud balls contain the cremated remains of the deceased. They're intended to serve the same purpose as the stones. The most colorful guy in Bhutanese history was my personal hero, a lama named Drukpa Kunli. He built this gompa in the 15th century. Drukpa nicknamed the Divine Madman, was a wild and crazy guy. He wanted everybody to lighten up. He went around Bhutan singing, joking, boozing, and acting out. He had sex with the wives of his hosts and his sponsors, but everybody loved him anyway. He's still famous today for this stuff.
archery is the national sport of Bhutan. Traditional bamboo bows have given way to space-age models of carbon nanofibers. The target is 140 yards away. And look at that crosswind. During competition, the archers sing their own praises when they do well and mock their opponents mercilessly for their efforts. This fantastic song had recently hosted the wedding of the Prince Jigme Wangchuk and his bride Jepsum Pema. Jigme went to school in the West and is a big Elvis Presley fan. He first met Jetsum on a tour of schools and fell madly in love with her when she was only 16. Prayer wheels are filled with rolled up prayer scrolls. Just one turn delivers 1,000 prayers. They're a masterpiece of efficiency when it comes to maximization of invocation. Way in the distance, you can barely see the famous Tiger's Nest Monastery. It's hanging on a sheer cliff face, 1,800 feet above the valley floor. It's a two-hour hike each way. I was slowly limping up the trail. Halfway up, two Indian guys cheered me on, saying, Hang on in there, Uncle. I did get very close to the Tiger's Nest. As you can see, I was only a narrow gorge 400 feet deep away. That's 1,600 feet of stairs, 75 stories there and back. Sally made the entire track. was a sweet and beautiful little town. Kichau Locking Monastery the sacred jewel of Bhutan, built in the 7th century. Oh, yeah.
It was a very special day when we were there. The big fees of Buddhism in all Bhutan was visiting. We walked through the prayer room during the ceremony, but were forbidden to look in his direction or catch his eye. It contains a fantastic statue of the Buddha. It was donated by the Emperor of China over a thousand years ago. With the chanting, the incense, and the bells and drums, it was a very profound experience. The last place we had to visit before we left Bhutan was the Valley of the Black Neck Cranes. The road was only opened a few years before and was a narrow and treacherous piece of work. The solar-powered dash prayer wheel was spinning wildly. We squeaked by trucks with only inches to spare. In some places, our wheels almost went over the cliff. The Valley of the Black Neck Cranes the Gangtang Monastery. Unfortunately, we never saw any black neck cranes, but the visit there was a fantastic experience. There's nowhere else in the world today that's even remotely like Bhutan. <laughs> 